Hello, this is Gary Fox of Create and Make, where the same old stuff just ain't good enough. Tonight we're going to talk about the third part of how I create graphs. We're going to talk about how I program sometimes to create the graphs. So, first thing we need to talk about is why would you even want to do that? So, let's go ahead and pull up a views file. And hopefully it pulls up. I am having Murphy went live with me again tonight. Um, and as you see on this file, there's a whole lot of data points there. And there are a whole lot of possible graphs I could draw in this particular file. Uh, and that would be very hard to do if I were to do an app with a, a spreadsheet and even more so because these calculations that are being done in here are being done with complex numbers, which means that I have both a real and imaginary part. The reason that's being done is that one of the things that I'm worrying about is phase. And so uh, as I'm looking at phase, um, that's important for this particular set of calculations. So. This is, uh, that's the reason that you do things in, in Python or in a programming language. Okay, I choose Python to do my programming because it's a relatively simple language to use and I got up to speed very quickly. I also, a personal reason, spent a lot of time learning Visual Basic uh, to use with a database one time and then with Microsoft's three-year update they changed the whole way that you uh, connected to that database and uh, I don't program enough where that I feel like having to relearn everything uh, that often if I program continuously then it wouldn't probably not be a big problem but I don't so therefore I want a language that's relatively easy also, going back to the language, we'll go back one thing. Python has very, very good documentation. And we'll pull up their documentation file. And uh, it has a very good tutorial. And it has a very good, uh, what they call library reference, keep this under your pillow. And uh, I use it pretty often. So I'm able to get the answers that I want. If I pull into the library reference, for instance, let's look at numbers. Uh, the very first one it talks about is complex numbers, and that's the ones I had to use. And I was able to find what I need to know uh, for complex, all of the uh, functions that we will be using in the program. So it's a very well documented program. It's, a, it's open source. It's available in Windows. It's available in uh, Linux and also available in Mac. So it's a really good program to uh, work from and be able to talk with everyone. There is some differences between Windows and at least Linux. I don't know that much about Mac. Uh, but there are differences Let's close this thing out and uh, we'll go back into the actual program and I'll talk about those differences. When you load it up in Windows, you will get also a program that they call Idle. And with Idle, uh, it allows you to, uh, to edit the program. When I do it in Linux, uh, I basically just use my text editor which is somewhat equivalent to uh, Notepad. The only thing is that it color codes different things. Uh, comments are color coded in blue. Um, fixed values, constants are color coded in red, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it, it kind of helps self-document. Okay, the way I wrote the program, I had these uh, subroutines that I used pretty often over and over. Um, for those of you 
that have been following the electrical, um, you always have to multiply everything by 2 times pi and uh, to come up with the frequency, to come up with it in what's called uh, radians per second. And so I just did that one time. I got sick of typing 2 times pi over and over. And uh, so I had these, these subroutines. The subroutine that we're going to talk about is the CSV initialize and the CSV write. Okay, in my program, the main, I, what I did was I initialized some variables. And then I initialized what I was going to write for those uh, field names in the, uh, in the CSV file. So that's basically what this is. This is all those field names. First I had the frequency, then I had the uh, impedance, both the real value and the imaginary value. Then I had the absolute and the phase of the total current. Then I did the voltage and the absolute value and phase for the first element, and so on and so forth. And I put them all down. And then the very last thing was I measured what the gain was going out of the circuit versus the signal going in. So I created that, and in my first call here, okay, let's talk a little bit more about one other thing also that I initialized. I initialized the name of the directory, which happens to be my home directory, and then also what the program name was. Now the difference between Windows doing it in Windows and doing it in Linux is the backslash. Linux and most other operating systems use a front slash to divide directories. As you go down the directory tree or the file tree, uh, folder tree is, I guess is the modern term for it. Windows uses a backslash. Okay, a backslash in uh, programming language means it's a special character is the next Thing. So this one right here is backslash in. That means new line. In Windows, you have to use backslash backslash because the first part tells you it's a special character and the second part says the special character is a backslash. So all of this would have to be C colon backslash backslash my name backslash backslash whatever the directory is backslash backslash. That's the biggest difference between Windows and the others. And then this particular part would be different depending upon how you set up your directory tree. So, once I did that, I called up CSV initialize. That's my file name. That's that whole directory name that we just went through. And then this first command says that it's a write. And it wrote what that W means is that it completely wipes out the old file and writes the new file right over top of it. And then it wrote this thing I call name string, which is basically all of those uh, field names. So it wrote the first line of the CSV file. And then it closed the file. Okay, later on, after I calculate a one record for one frequency, I then do a call of CSV write, and you'll find it in my program. It's the last thing I call, and I call it before I do the next iteration. This is the part where it goes back and continues doing the next loop. The next loop would be the next frequency. So I'm using the program, looping it over and over and over. So I call it, I got all these data points. However, there's actually about twice as many of those data because each one includes two parts since it's a complex number. So you see I got I only send in F total or Z total, but I'm printing out Z total real and Z total imaginary. You see that between each one of those I've got a quote, a comma, and I put the comma inside a quote marks because it's a character. And that's basically my comma separated variables. That's where I'm doing the commas for separating the variables. And 
and then I continue on doing the others. The others I do a little different. I actually calculate uh, the absolute value and the uh, phase of it. And they got a special program, a special thing that does that. And then they got a special thing that converts it from radians to degrees. So I have everything that I want there uh, for that. And so I'm able to uh, then do all of my records one right after another. So the programming is relatively easy. Uh, it takes a little time to learn it, but it's relatively easy. And you call the same subroutine over and over and over again. After I write one record, I close the file again. But when I open this file, you see it's got an A. The A means that it's appended to the file. So I append each record and then I reclose the file. Then I open it up when I have the next record ready to write. And I'm able to call the same subroutine. So that's basically how it was done. And that's how it created the, uh, the file. And uh, you see that I'm using complex numbers in here. Uh, and that's basically what the calculations were for the program. Uh, makes life a whole lot easier. It would have been impossible to do if I had tried doing it with a spreadsheet. It also would be, uh, there are programs sometimes where you have to iterate the value because you got a nonlinear functions. And so you start from a small value and you and then you try a big value and then you start bracketing in until you get to the value that's going to be close enough that you consider it done. That's called iterative programming. And uh, again, it's next to impossible to do with a spreadsheet. So programming is a very useful thing to do for this kind of scientific kind of uh, calculations, scientific and design calculations. So hopefully I gave you a little flavor for, for why it's done. It was not intended to be a tutorial. It was uh, just a, hey, this is how I do it. Hopefully it whets your appetite. I will put a link on the uh, show notes or the video notes that tells you where to find Python. Uh, and Python, by the way, is a cool language because it was named after Monty Python. The guys that uh, wrote it like Monty Python, <laughs> so they named a the program that. Um, so. Anyhow, and it's a it's a relatively easy language. It's not like C, where you can end up with a memory. I forget what they call those, but memory leaks, where all of a sudden you're consuming all the memory of your program of your computer, or your program jumps out into the middle of no no, no man's land and crashes your computer. Uh, it's much easier to learn than, than C. It's also an object-oriented, I see, forget, yeah, object-oriented programming, I think is the terminology, uh, where, as you can see, when I was calling, uh, I had to open up a couple objects here called math and C-math for complex math, and uh, when I, when I worked with those, um, I had to use C math in front of it because it was part of that object. Uh, but it's relatively easy. And then once you write it one time, you can cut and paste from your own stuff. The other advantage of writing your own program versus doing a program where you're you got a canned piece of software. Number one, you gotta buy the canned software and you gotta learn the canned software. And then partway through it, you find out they can't do everything you want to do, and so you feel like you just wasted a bunch of time there. When you write your own program, it means that you have to understand it enough that you can actually write it and tell the program what you want to do. And to me, that's worth uh, a whole lot right there. That means that you really understand the stuff. And there's no way I could have taught all of the stuff that I've taught in the... Uh, in the uh, website 
without having done a lot of the programming myself because that forced me to ask myself some questions that I wanted to be right on before I uh, presented the information. Anyhow, that's uh, the reason, that's the last part of uh, how I create these graphs. Uh, as you can see, this one was called Bode 4. Um, what we're working toward is uh, some, some procedures called Bode diagrams, and that's the American way of pronouncing. I think in Dutch it's pronounced Boda. Uh, and, uh, I did several different ones right in here, and then I gradually kept making the program grow and grow and grow. Uh, and uh, I got to the point where they were all based on that four element, the four element uh, diagram. And uh, I was just able to keep repeating what I had already done. Anyhow, appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of this. And uh, uh, views using CSV files and then Python to me is the way to go. Uh, let's see. Let's do po point out one thing right in here. Pull up one of these views files. One of the things you can do in views is you can actually write Python within it. Uh, so it's based on Python also. Uh, and I forget how to do that. I have yet to do it. Um, but that's the way you can write functions inside uh, inside views. So Python is well worth learning. And I've used it quite a bit for a lot of different things. So again, I will put a link in the uh, video notes. And uh, hopefully I've whetted your appetite. Appreciate you watching. Again, as I said, I hope you got something out of this. Thank you. This is Gary Fox.